I want to talk to you today about a topic which we all like to talk about, which is managing time. So let me ask you this question: Do you think you are a? Do you think that you are a great time manager? And if you answered yes, then let me ask you to do something. If you are a great time manager, I want you to give me five extra minutes today. Can you do that? Obviously not, because you can't manage time. The first rule to understand about time management is that time cannot be managed. Time is the factor of the Earth's rotation, and we have no control over that. So what can we manage? We can manage our priorities. We can manage what we do with the time. So first tool is to write down your life goal. Because if we want to judge whether we are managing time well or not, we have to judge in the context of well compared to what. What is well, and how do you judge that by having a clear life goal? To give you a, a way of arriving at that, imagine that today is your last working day in your organization. And there's a farewell party for you, and a friend of yours is giving a speech about you and your achievement. And this friend of yours knows you very well, has seen your whole career, and he or she is talking about you and saying all that you achieved. Now, ask yourself, what would you like to hear in that speech? Because what you would like to hear in that speech is what you must start preparing for from today. Question, therefore, to ask yourself is, what difference do you want to make? So, how do you begin that? The way to begin that is to first take a snapshot of where you are now, and the way to do that is to create a time log. How do you create a time log? Use the uh, the table that I'm that I have shown you on the slide here. Start with your day from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. So, say for example, you wake up at 4:30 in the morning. Every half hour in your time log, record what you do every single half hour for the whole day. So 4:30, the next one is 5 to 5:30, 6, and so on. So as you are writing that, say for example, you are writing 4:30 a.m., trying to get up. 5 a.m., still trying to get up. 5:30 a.m., still trying to get up. Right? So write down every half hour what you are doing. Then, when you come to the middle of the time log, you will come to say 9:30. Don't put a big bracket and say 9:30 to 5 at work. No, even at work. 9:30. What were you doing? 10 o'clock. What were you doing? 10:30. What were you doing? So you say, well, 9:30 to 10 o'clock, I was taking a call. 10 o'clock. Now you think and say, well, what was I doing at 10? I can't remember. Well, all right. So 10 to 10:30, I have no clue. Leave it blank. 10:30 to 11, my we had a uh, floor meeting, so we were at the floor meeting. 11 to 11:30, I took a tea break. A lot of tea to drink. So half an hour for that. Uh, 11.30 to 12, I took a pre-lunch break. 12 to 12.30, I took a close to lunch break. And 12.30 to 1, I took the actual lunch break. And then 1 to 1.30, I took a post-lunch break. And 1.30 to 2, I actually eventually got back to my workplace. You see what I'm doing? Every half an hour, what were you doing? Until you come to the end where you go to sleep. Once you have your time log with you, now do this calculation. I call this my effective time calculation. Take the time log and look at this time log. And from the time log, you say, you do this, you do make this equation. Number one is actual time minus maintenance time is available time. What is actual time? 24 hours. What is maintenance time? All the time that you use in sleep and in activities related to maintaining yourself. So, time to in, 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 in the bathroom, in the shower, um, time eating lunch, tea, breakfast, dinner, whatever, uh, time in putting on your makeup, uh, all of that. Including all, include also in this any commuting time. If you drive your own car or you drive your own vehicle to your work, then include that time also. Unless you are doing something value adding in addition to the driving, uh, I don't. I don't suggest doing too many things in addition to driving because it's not good for health. But uh, for example, if you are listening to some useful stuff on your way to work, that's a different matter. But otherwise, your commuting time also, uh, especially if you're driving your own vehicle. If you're using public transport, and during that time while you're sitting in the train, the tube, uh, the bus, or the taxi, or whatever, uh, if you are making use of that time effectively, then don't put it in here. Uh, then it's not maintenance time, it, it goes somewhere else. But otherwise, maintenance time is your sleep, uh, your eating, your 
bathing uh, and your other maintenance activities. So actual time 24 hours minus maintenance time. Uh, guess how much that will be? Say 8 hours of sleep or give or take an hour or two here and there uh, plus all of that. Say 10 hours. So actual time is 24 hours minus 10 hours is 14 hours is available time. Now take this 14 hours available time and look at your time log and say how much of that available time was spent in pursuit of my life goal. And that's the reason why you realize now why it is important for you to have the life goal statement ready before you can do this activity. So look at the life goal statement and from the life goal statement you look at your time log and say out of all these time slots how much of this time was spent in pursuit of my life goal. That time is your effective time. Your effectiveness in life depends on how you can maximize your effective time. I'm going to teach you now three uh, tools to maximize ET, to maximize effective time. Prioritization, delegation and learning to say no. Three important things. The first one, before you go anywhere, just ask yourself, do you really want to do this? If you really want to do this, you got to get serious about it. So the first one, prioritization. I'm showing you the graph of what we call the effort impact analysis. Draw this graph. Effort on one axis, impact on the other axis. Uh, remember the, the, the remember Pareto principle, which is 20% of what you do produces 80% of the results. So if you if you make this uh, four blocker, uh, this grid, you will find that you have activities which are high effort and low impact or no impact. High effort and low impact, which I call waste. You have other activities which are low effort and low impact. I call them do if you have to. You have third set of activities which is high effort and high impact and I call that hard work and you have other activities which are low effort and high impact which I call leverage. Now take your time log, look at the activities and look at this map and look at the activities and say which goes where. Out of the time log which activities go into your waste. Which activities go into hard work? Which activities go into leverage? Which of the activities are low effort and high impact? Maximize those because those are your leverage activities. Which activities are high effort? And remember, effort is not only work. Effort is investment. Effort is time spent. Effort is actual energy spent. So all these three together, I'm calling it effort. So which activities are high effort? And low impact waste. Eliminate the waste. The do if you have to have two activities are what you delegate. Try and if you have to do them, do them. If you if some some of these activities can be given off to somebody else <coughs> who can do those activities instead of you. <coughs> the hard work activities is high effort and high impact. You want to earn a PhD, you have to do a lot of work for that, but it's also high impact. At the end of the day, you have a doctorate and you uh, that that is good for your career so you do a lot of hard work and then you have activities which are low effort and high impact what is your connection with your creator for example high leverage activity what are, what are, what is your customer service like doesn't take much effort to be good to customers but huge leverage so low effort high impact look at those activities second tool what i call the uh, the three by three rule and that's the prior uh, the, 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 the rule which is a very interesting story behind this and the story is that uh, the, the chairman of uh, US Steel called up a friend of his and he said that I've just taken over as the, as the chairman of the company I find that people are wasting a lot of time and I need you to come and run a series of time management workshops the man said uh, I don't have time to run time management workshops but I'm going to tell you on the over the phone uh, a quick rule and at the end of the year apply the rule and if you think it is worth it was worthwhile then pay me whatever you think it is worth and the story goes that they paid him twenty five thousand dollars now I'm about to tell you this thing for free so listen carefully it's called the three by three rule every day when you come to work sit at your desk and make a list of three activities that you need to do in order of priority according to impact 
Please understand very clearly. Again, go back to the other uh, the, the, the other uh, grid, which is the effort impact analysis, and say, in, in depending on the impact, uh, in order of priority, which is the number one high impact activity that I must complete today, which is the number two, and which is the number three. Do not put more than three activities on that list to begin with. Start with that list every single morning. Make this list. Then start with the first activity and continue until you finish it and if you are interrupted go back to it and complete it then only go to the next activity do not start an activity do not start on activity 2 until you have completed activity 1 if you got interrupted as i said come back and complete that activity before you go to the next activity once you finish activity 1 activity then you go to activity 2 once you finish activity 2 then you go to the third one and then if you finished all the three activities and you still have time then you add on a fourth one and you do that but until you complete the three activities don't even look at a fourth activity now next morning when you come write a new list in order of priority for example in the in, in and don't don't just do it mechanically don't say uh, today i had three activities i managed to complete only two so my activity three for today becomes activity one automatically tomorrow no it does not become automatic you have to think about it and say should it be there or should it not be there for example your activity three for today was to visit this friend of yours who is in hospital now tomorrow in the morning you might discover that the friend got well and he left and he's gone home so the, the opportunity to visit him is gone so don't just put an activity there just because it's a leftover from the previous day every day start a new list three activities in order of priority which you will do one after the other one after completing the next one and for that it's important you can use this matrix which I call the urgent and important matrix. This urgent and important matrix has to do, uh, you take again your activities which you are going to do and put them on, the, on this matrix. You will have act activities which are very urgent but not important. These are either emergencies or these are activities which you really don't know. The phone rings, you don't know whether it's urgent or important or what. But because it is ringing, you pick up the phone, you have this conversation, the conversation might have been a complete waste of time and you just lost that time uh, which could have been used for something more useful so therefore urgent but not important number two is urgent and important those are emergencies those are things which you just have to drop everything and do it your car you didn't maintain it uh, for a long time and suddenly it breaks down in the middle of the highway now you have to leave everything else and attend to the car because you can't just leave it there then you have a third set of activities which are neither urgent nor important uh, in, in which you can you can really club quite a lot of stuff that we do on a daily basis which is neither urgent nor important and then you have activities which are not urgent but very important these are the developmental work these are the developmental activities that we have that book that you should have read which you have been telling yourself I must read this book but you haven't read it comes in there your daily physical exercise your maintenance of your body comes in there your maintenance of your vehicle comes in there all kinds of developmental activity there's no sword hanging over your neck over your head there's the activity is important you also know that but it's not urgent because nobody is paying you for it directly and immediately you tend to ignore it and push it back things which are important but not urgent if they are ignored long enough they will escalate into the upper uh, upper upper quadrant which is urgent and important they become emergencies you do you don't maintain your body one day you have to be in hospital go straight up uh, activities which are neither urgent nor important should effectively be eliminated from our life if it's neither urgent nor important why are you doing it remove that uh, activities which are urgent but not important uh, usually it's a good idea to delegate them uh, because somebody is in your face you have to get get rid of them delegate them focus on activities which are important but not urgent because they are the most beneficial of all the activities and if you focus on them early enough and if you focus on them intelligently enough you will find that the number of emergencies in your life also will come down because that's the whole issue and the whole benefit of planning we go to the next tool which is the magic word no uh, develop assertiveness do remember uh, aggressiveness 
is negative, assertiveness is positive. Aggressiveness is when other people's rights are violated. Assertiveness is self-expression through which you stand up for your own rights without violating the rights of others. And that's why it's very important to be assertive. Do not hesitate to say no. If you don't hesitate, if you if you hesitate to say no, then you will find that you people will take you for a ride, people will, will impose on you, people will take away your time, uh, and then you will be left with nothing. So say no, but how to say no without hurting people? Say no by saying yes. Tell somebody, I would love to give you my full attention, but I can't do that now. So why don't we talk about this and set a time? Why don't we talk about this at 4 p.m.? Uh, stand up for, in for interruption. If somebody walks in, unexpected visitors, just stand up and talk to them and keep walking towards the door as you talk to them. And they will get the message. Make a habit of never interrupting anybody. Don't interrupt people. Don't drop in on people. Uh, Take Always take appointments. Um, as I say, if you have nothing to do, don't do it here. This is not the space for you to do when you have nothing to do. Uh, that way, people will also uh, respect your time. They will respect your space and they will not waste your time uh, either. Number four is never forward things. Don't forward chain mails. Uh, delete the ones you receive unread and tell everybody that this is what happens. Uh, that you will not forward chain mails. Oh, and last, uh, uh, fifth one, is always call ahead and make an appointment. Tell the person what you want to talk about. Uh, tell the person what you want uh, and how long you will need for that. It's very efficient to meet people after making appointments because then they are prepared for you, they are mentally prepared for you, they have freed their time to meet you. And also if there was any uh, pre-work to be done in terms of thinking about whatever it is that you wanted to meet them about, they have had an opportunity to do that pre-work and the meeting is always much more beneficial, much more useful. Just dropping in on somebody, uh, just walking into somebody's office is always a useless thing to do, it's just a waste of time. And last and very, very important, make punctuality an absolute obsession. Time is a number. Time is not open to interpretation. 9 o'clock is 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock is not something to me and something else to you. So always and always and always remember, it is very very important to be punctual. In the final analysis, remember, it's not about time at all. It's about life. Your life. I remind myself and you about a lovely quote which I, uh, I don't know who the author of this quote is, but it's a beautiful quote. It says, watch your thoughts because they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions because they become habits. Watch your habits because they become character. And watch your character because it becomes your destiny. And that's what I remind myself and you. Let us watch our character because that is our destiny. Thank you very much.